uh, what I enjoy very much uh, is to work with external collaborations, which are many times freelance, very into a specific field. So they're experts and uh, they might be able to improve a lot the quality of the project. Business of Architecture UK, episode 70. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week I am speaking yet again internationally via the magic of Zoom to Gian Piero Venturini, who is originally, as you might have guessed from his name, is Italian, but he's actually living in Spain. And Gian Piero is the founder of Iterant Office and the creator of the New Generations Festival. So Iterant Office curates events, exhibitions and publications which facilitate the exchange of knowledge supported by a multidisciplinary network. So basically, I met Gian Piero via Instagram, as I often meet some of the most interesting people in the architectural world uh, through that wonderful mode of social media. And I came across a book that he has just recently published called Atlas of Emerging Practices, Being an Architect in the 21st Century. And this is an incredible piece of work which has involved Gian Piero interviewing hundreds of architects across the continent about their ways of practicing, about their methodologies, about their business organizations, um, about the way that they structure their offices and their thinking and their research. Um, and he was really kind of capturing a picture of the breadth of the way that architects are practicing uh, particularly young practices in Europe at the moment. And for me, it really kind of, you know, we, we struck a lot of resonance with each other and a very kind of similar love and passion for the architectural industry. And in a way, we're doing very sorts of similar things where we're both interviewing lots of architects about their businesses, about their organizations, about their methods, and collating and curating this kind of information um, for general consumption. So in this interview, I, I do ask Gian a lot of questions about how, about his own business structure, how iterant often uh, office operates um, and also his process for asking questions and doing research about the architectural industry because I do think that kind of meta view of the industry is also very very useful um, and there's so much information here there really is so much richness and I do encourage you to grab a copy of Atlas of Emerging Practices being an architect in the 21st century if you want a copy of that actually we've got a special discount code link for you so do click in the information and get your copy of this beautiful beautiful book so sit back relax and enjoy Gian Piero Venturini of Iterant Office. So massive thank you to all of you for listening and supporting the Business of Architecture UK for the last couple of years. Big shout out to those of you who have come to our live events, attended the webinars and of course to those of you who have downloaded the weekly podcast and have been listening to them on your bicycles. And as you know, we love helping architects win meaningful and profitable work, but it's not always that simple to implement these ideas or translate them into something that Will work for you. So what I wanted to do was to invite you onto a quick 15 minute chat with myself. We can both grab a cup of tea and I'd like to ask you about what content you found most valuable and why and what you'd like to hear more of. And I'd also love to hear more about your business, and what you're building at the moment and where you are headed to business wise in 2020. So there's no charge or any obligation with this call, just simply to find out how our content has been of value. And if we get that far and with your permission of course what might be next what might be possible and how business of architecture uk could be supportive of that does that sound fair brilliant so if you want to book a 15 minute chat with me i'm calling these calls the boa uk discovery call or just simply a chat with ryan use the link in the information and i look forward to speaking to you gian gian piero venturini fine yeah excellent welcome to the business of architecture Thank you very much for absolute, having me. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. So you are the head of Iterant Office, which is a research collective. You're based in Spain. You're originally from Italy. And you've recently produced this incredible book, Atlas of Emerging Practices, Being an Architect in the 21st Century. 
Um, right. And, and we've been talking a little bit about how this book has come about and the sort of the work that you've been doing. And it kind of overlaps a lot with, with the, with the interests and the missions of the business of architecture UK and what we're looking at. And, and, and for me, I've just, I was so a inspired, b fascinated and c super excited that somebody has taken the full time, the time to go this deep into researching the different modes of practice across Europe, the different ways of business organization, and then to start collating it in this really very easy to access kind of like encyclopedic tome, if you like, of architectural practices. So my first question is, how did this idea come about and how have you been collating it? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it maybe takes a lot to explain, uh, to answer the question maybe, but um, let's, let's start uh, from the beginning. I would say uh, the, as a founder of Itinerant Office, one of, the first pro one of the first projects that I developed, I started developing about six years ago, uh, is called uh, New Generations, which is a research that tries to investigate uh, how the emerging practices, the new generation of young practices uh, at the European scale had in a certain way to uh, reinvent themselves since the beginning of the financial crisis. And the idea started really organically in a way because um, I, when I founded IT in Rome Office six years ago, uh, I basically was uh, 30 years old, I'm now 36. And after a few years working abroad uh, in the Netherlands, uh, in Japan, uh, in Italy, where I come from, Spain, etc., I, I traveled a lot and worked a lot abroad. Uh, I, when I decided to start my own path and, and try to conform myself um, within these, the, the job market, let's say, try to, find, try to, um, to start my own practice, I thought that the first uh, thing I had to do instead of just... Uh, uh, trying to do a lot of competition or um, just uh, trying things. I wanted to understand how other people like me that they were starting were actually mm -hmm. doing successfully this profession. So I started just, I, I, I've asked at the beginning a series of friends or friends of friends, uh, kind of close contacts, uh, architects like me, that they uh, were uh, practicing this profession, I thought, uh, I still think uh, really uh, in, in a very um, interesting way. So I asked them just to meet and I recorded the series of short video interviews, like the one that we are doing now, um, just to ask them, how did you do that? So well, how, wh why did you do that? Uh, which were the condition that, so, uh, and through that series of uh, short meeting interviews, which were very informal, uh, even though I was recording those in, in interviews with my phone in a very informal way, then I start learning that there were so many different ways to practice the profession of the architect. Of course, mm -hmm. there are the kind of the, let's say, traditional way. You are very interested, of course, if you study architecture, you're very interested in building buildings, uh, designing buildings, let's say. But then because of the crisis, uh, uh, many... Um, mainly at the European scale, I would say, uh, many young architects were affected uh, from the financial situation that they had to find other way, let's say, to, uh, to, to practice the profession by uh, joining forces with other disciplines, for instance, or, or experts, or uh, by uh, kind of invading other fields. Uh, uh, since the beginning, I would say that the architect has been very used to work with uh, a lot of other professions uh, mm. in a more traditional way would say like the, engi the engineers or technicians uh, also graphic designers etc and I would say that in the last few years that these uh, um, um, say these fields has been broadened up a bit because the architects had to in a way try to find other ways to uh, to explore uh, the disciplines, um, as I mentioned, by joining forces maybe, or by invading other fields. What, what were some of the unusual collaborations or entries into alternate disciplines that you were beginning to become aware of? 
it's I would I wouldn't say maybe it's kind of a, a less traditional or but I think that uh, I mean there are many many fields I would say in which the architect try to uh, to 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 yeah well the architect try to explore uh, possibilities in other fields uh, of course uh, like for instance the editorial field I think it's very interesting uh, I think that it also since the beginning I would say when you try when you when you study the biographies of uh, uh, very established, well-established architects at a worldwide scale, you many times see that uh, at the beginning they were kind of doing the same, like uh, I don't know, many architects at the beginning, they were collaborating with the magazine of the Board of Architects of their city, mm -hmm. or they were uh, collaborating as uh, the uh, part of the editorial team of uh, some magazine writing articles, etc. But it was, I think, second more, uh, more parallel in a way uh, to the uh, production, to the building production. Um, today, I think it's it's more common that the the, the research part, um, um, in a way, uh, offer much more possibilities um, uh, in, in the editorial field. Let's say so. I mean, Atlas is a kind of a representation of that. Uh, many times we, when we try to do research, when we try to develop our own ideas, uh, we, um, uh, we we try to do our let's yeah, yeah we try to develop our research through um, books, uh, or magazines, articles. Uh, we try to shape our ideas, and they take form through the editorial part. But I think there are a very wide. Uh, 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 let's say um, fields categories uh, uh, of practice in the architecture, the architecture, uh, the architecture profession. Like for instance, I think that uh, the uh, participatory fields, for instance, and everything that relates with the I, I call that the reactivation of the public space or reuse, regeneration of the public space. Let's say this is a very common field, not only in Europe but in many other countries, which mm. comes from everything that relates with the urban metabolism, recycling, uh, etc. At certain point, we discover that uh, we don't have to to just throw uh, down all the buildings that we've been building in the last 20, 30 years because it's not sustainable, or uh, because of the crisis, for instance, in many countries for different reasons, many buildings that we have been building. Uh, during the crisis, so just before the crisis, had been abandoned. Yeah. In the Netherlands, uh, for instance, they had this, uh, uh, now they kind of solved this problem, but when I've been working there, um, they had this big issue with the vacant building related with the, with the office building, for instance. So, and they have been uh, working a lot, architects have been involved a lot in how to reuse, how to reshape, how to refunction this building. There's a kind of a specific case, but uh, like here in Spain, where I'm based, there's a very long tradition with the with the public space. So many uh, central or peripheral areas are have been abandoned through times, and uh, uh, many times architects are kind of uh, um, finding their place here, uh, which um, it doesn't need, uh, necessarily um, develop into an architectural project but more into a, a process, let's say. Mm. So how do we involve citizens in, uh, or how do we involve the different stakeholders and parties involved uh, in, in, in this process, which are maybe citizens on the one hand, local uh, citizens which are living in a specific neighbor, neighborhood, uh, but also the public administrations, um, other experts, uh, designers, or uh, people which are actually interested in the reactivation of a specific area. So this uh, many times uh, um, translates in uh, a new position that the architect takes as a sort, I would say, as a sort of a, a mediator, sort of a, that, uh, yeah, try to mediate between the different parties. Um, as I mentioned, it doesn't necessarily translate into an architectural project, but more into a process. And, uh, and and that, that's really interesting because you, you can start to see all the, all the things you're talking about. You can start to see the architectural way of thinking and synthesis of ideas and curation very, very applicable into these, these kind of related disciplines. Um, and it's interesting that you say editorial, that, that, that you know, architects have been involved in this kind of editorial process. Again, a, a process of curation, 
bringing together ideas, collections of things. And that's very much a kind of architectural generalist broad way or overview of looking at things. And I can see how that's, that's, that's very applicable. And then you think of, you know, you think of architects like Rem Coolhouse or Lena Bobardi, for example, who were involved in the media in some form beforehand or, or, or whilst being architects, you know, and it's often, and it's often been a, a, a kind of alternative mode of practice when there is no buildings to be produced or there's no work that you need to find a new way of produ- practicing architecture. And these other sorts of fields are, 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 are very, you know, they're very, they, they, as you say, they run parallel. Were, were there any unusual sorts of, I mean, and I mean like disciplines that you wouldn't expect architects going into? Well, uh, I think that, I mean, it's, uh, it's not very common, I would say, because at the end, the architect uh, has uh, the dream of building stuff. So, I mean, uh, and, and many times this is the, this is the main goal. So, um, uh, but I would say that there are, uh, for instance, in the UK, uh, in London, uh, there is a group that uh, um, participated in our research which I think it's very interesting. Um, I met them in Spain because one of the two guys is from uh, Madrid and, and the other one is from Paris. And then, then they moved to London to open their own uh, startup, uh, which I think it's uh, called, well, at the beginning was called uh, O, like O-O-H-O. And then now um, I think the, the new name is kind of rock, rock laboratory, rock in laboratory, something like right. that. I don't remember exactly, but I think this is kind of interesting because they, this is totally different from architecture. So uh, when they, uh, they start in their own startup, the idea was uh, try to find a way to replace uh, plastics with uh, uh, other kind of material. So uh, to find a, a new way to basically get rid of uh, plastic bottles and everything that relates with plastic. So in, and then they found this very interesting way to uh, replace this material with uh, um, sort of a, a transparent uh, um, um, skin made of uh, algas, which basically uh, contain waters. Uh, and then you just kind of eat this uh, small uh, bubble of alga. Um, yeah. now I think they are already, uh, well, they, they got a lot of, they, they've been published kind of everywhere. They've been, uh, they got a lot of funds to develop this idea. And of course, uh, they are kind of working in, in, in a, I would say kind of a, in a chemistry, in a, in a laboratory, mm-hmm. which had a lot of to do with, uh, engineering, chemistry, um, and other disciplines related more with the, um, Research on, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. This is, this is really, really fascinating because I, I love stories like this um, about architects venturing into other areas and kind of fusing with an entrepreneurial spirit and, 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 and getting involved, using the architectural thinking. And again, something like, uh, you know, addressing packaging is something that can be treated very architecturally because you can look at it on the scale of like a little thing like the actual packaging and then on the scale of an urban city and how mass packaging is operating and the, the sort of the way that architectural thinking can unlock potential and how that that can become a business. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, I think, yeah, sorry. And, and I, I think that's really, that's really interesting just in terms of how much latent resource there is in the architectural profession. Um, and, you know, there's, if there's complaints about fees or architects not earning a lot of money, there are these other strands that architects can move into, which are almost infinite. Of the different, I think so. I think so. Possibilities. But I would say that uh, I mean, uh, this is I think it's a big debate uh, also uh, when you are starting architecture. Uh, the fact that uh, at the end, architecture, of course, is a, a very specific discipline. When you are starting architecture, what you learn is to kind of building or designing buildings from the technical part to the more conceptual or from the more conceptual part to the more technical part, I would say. Mm. Uh, but then I, the, the architectural project is so complex that uh, the, the managing process is uh, might be uh, applied to many other disciplines. So I think that 
in a way, the architectural profession is, is very resilient in, in this way because in times of crisis, I think it, it is one of the uh, profession which uh, had uh, m more than others had to reinvent itself, which doesn't mean that uh, uh, suddenly architects are not interested anymore in building buildings, but they had to find other ways to, to do that because there were no possibility to, 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 to designing or to building mainly because of the lack of finance, etc. And I think that uh, we, we, in a way, as architects, I also include myself in, in uh, part of this, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the architecture field, let's say, even though I, I, I always say that I've been trained as an architect, but at the end, uh, I'm more into research, theory, um, uh, editorial production, etc. cetera. Uh, but of course, related with architecture field. So I'm very interested in everything that relates with architecture and other disciplines, for instance. But at the end, uh, uh, yeah, I think that the, uh, the architect profession, uh, it, it's uh, um, at least uh, uh, provides you the possibility also to um, understand other disciplines, to work with other disciplines, just have to understand how to kind of change a bit the way you, instead of applying your knowledge to a building, you can do that also to other fields. Mm. And that's and 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 that's uh, and that what we 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 can see also in in Atlas, for instance. To say it so, uh, I I really insist in the fact that this is a kind of a, a, a critique that I do to the architects in general. Architects are very and are and the, and the architectural profession is a, a very egocentric um, discipline, and the architects. Uh, needs to build their building so that that's the goal i think and it doesn't change in atlas as well uh, i mean a lot of practices from more than 20 european countries involved in the book and the research i mean of course they had they they've been forced to rethink a bit their their way and and many of them of course uh, are kind of uh, talking about really interesting concepts such as uh, the new way to collaborate, new way to uh, joining forces with other disciplines, exchange of knowledge, etc. But on the other hand, I think that the end, the architectural profession is very, uh, it's very, um, it's it's the ego, right? The and uh, and and the goal at the end is kind of building the the biggest building or 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 prove <laughs> that you can do that. <laughs> I think that. Things are changing, and I'm very happy about that because it, it's very important to actually, um, to yeah, to, to collaborate and to find new ways too, and also to to get rid a bit of these uh, very established archi stars world, uh, which has been characterized the last 20, 30 years, and which is still very strong today. Mm. But on the other hand, I think it's kind of, that's kind of part of ourselves in a way, part of part of the part of the game, and and it's something that also at the university they try to teach you. I mean, they, they try to teach you that uh, uh, you, just by um, uh, teaching you that uh, one of the most, uh, um, one, of, one of the best ways to practice your profession is competing with others by doing competition in a way. What they are teaching is that uh, you have to win. You have to be the first. You have to win the first prize and say that you're proud because you... So, mm -hmm. and I think that this is not very common in other disciplines. I think it's very characteristic from our discipline. Very interesting. And, and so what do you think is the, a new way of education or, or, or if there's a trend or in the past, we've, we're kind of coming out of this era of the star architect. What is the new era that, that you hope is emerging or that you, that you've seen emerging? Yeah, I, I hope. Uh, but let let's see what's uh, what's gonna happen in the next uh, in the next few years. What um, maybe uh, this is part of the research that I developed through the book Atlas, um, and then by studying different way of organizing the practice, for instance, or uh, business models, as you mentioned, uh, or different way also to to design and to uh, building and 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 to to build and also to uh, also to uh, communicate yourself, which are the four main, uh, the core uh, themes I developed through Atlas. Yeah. So in, the, so, in, so, in the, so in the book, you've, you've, you've divided it up into organization, business, media, and projects. Those are the, those are the, the yeah. sort of, how, how, so how did you, how did you come up with those themes? And are they, and are they, are they the sort of the, the parameters through which you're looking at this kind of new era of architectural yeah. culture? 
this is also kind of a, a, a long answer. It needs a bit to, to, to <laughs> a few words to get explained, I think, because um, the way um, I decided to focus on these four uh, themes, um, I think it starts um, with the beginning of new generation, let's say. Um, well, after, as I mentioned, new generation studies very, started very organically. So I wanted to understand how other people like me were practicing the profession and then through a series of very formal video interviews that I recorded with my phone for instance uh, I started to understand a bit better that there were other ways to do that um, so that very informal project uh, became the possibility to um, develop many other uh, parallel activities uh, related with the research such as uh, uh, small events, uh, workshops, uh, uh, roundtables that I've been organizing uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, focusing on specific topic, topics or, um, or other interviews, which uh, uh, instead of recording them through my phone, I, I, they, they kind of get a bit more professional because, uh, um, um, because I also had through time the possibility to get some more uh, funds and money to uh, sustain uh, that part of the, the research. Um, so I think that the first three, four years of new generation have been characterized by a lot of production. So uh, I think I've been recording or, uh, or uh, doing uh, more than 100 video interviews. Um, then, uh, I don't know, a lot of workshops, a lot of events uh, in which I try to involve all of these uh, young architects that I've been meeting through uh, this uh, research process. And then, of course, uh, one important uh, format which uh, I developed since the beginning, which is a festival, an architecture festival, which um, happens every year in a different city and which is called New Generations Festival. And uh, the next edition will happen in a, in a week from now in Rome, which is the sixth edition. The first one uh, happened in Milan and then Florence, Genoa. Uh, we had the chance last year to bring the format uh, abroad. So we, we did that in Warsaw. Um, and then again in, in Rome, in the contemporary um, our museum art in uh, Court Macro, which is a very interesting location to do these kind of things. So uh, a couple of years ago, after this uh, very huge production of contents, it's like many times you say that we, we never stop. We never have the time to think about what we're doing sometimes because you just do, 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 et cetera. And then you don't have the time to stop. And then uh, the Atlas, in a way, um, the beginning of Atlas starts from there. Uh, in other words, uh, I wanted to think, to take my time to think a bit better what I was, I, I've been doing the previous four or five years and try to kind of reorganize a bit all of this information, which were kind of a bit uh, um, now there, but I couldn't see the connection between things. Mm. So, um, so the, the, that, so I, I took some time to do, to, to explain that because the, the themes, the four main themes of, of Atlas are coming from there, basically. Uh, one year and a half ago, I decided to then reanalyze all the interviews, reanalyze all the um, results of the festival and workshops, etc. And then the first things that I've been doing uh, with my team uh, was to um, re listening all of these videos and all, all this material, for instance, and write down the uh, common words that have been, uh, was repeated uh, more often by uh, the interviewees. And just by doing this simple exercise, I've seen that there were uh, words such as collaboration, knowledge, projects, research, etc., which were repeated every time, so many times, etc., and many other words which are also kind of related with the arch the architecture field, which were of course repeated um, not not so often. So by doing a, a kind of a um, classification, so there were like uh, the word collaboration was repeated 180 times, for instance, something like that. I don't remember ex exactly. The, so but by doing that, then I, I saw that there were words more related with some fields and there were other terms which were related with other fields. And I tried to organize them in, in diagrams, in scheme, etc. And I saw that there were kind of these four main topics or there were words 
related with the, the organizational aspects of the practice, such as, uh, I would say, words related with how do we define ourselves as a practice. Practice is one word, for instance, but also office uh, or, um, or uh, workshop or uh, um, laboratory, etc. Uh, then there were words more related with the, uh, with the, with the business sector. So economy, fundraising, uh, uh, money, etc. Uh, other words were more related in, with, with the media, let's say, field. So the way I would say that media are intended as a way we, as architects, try to communicate ourselves, but also how to, what kind of, we, we get public, we, we try to, uh, narrate our own ideas in order to do many things so mm. everything that relates were terms related with the social media like facebook instagram etc were repeated a lot but also the communication or um, events etc terms which were kind of related with that field. and of course the, the, the fourth and the I would say I, I wouldn't say that the most important but of course it's like the more also banal in a way is the projects because everything that relates with the architectural project, of course, like designing, uh, building, etc. So we, uh, by doing that, uh, I decided it was kind of interesting to start focusing on those four main core, and uh, and uh, and then to develop the content that you can find in the book. Um, I wanted to yeah to start from 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 those four themes, and then. Uh, ask again to a selection of uh, uh, a very specific selection of uh, emerging practices that uh, I had the chance to involve in my previous activities, uh, plus a new selection of practices that they wanted specifically to involve in Atlas. Uh, I decided to prepare an online survey, a series of questions related with these four main themes. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, I think that through time, through these five, six years, I've been involving around 300 emerging practices, something more, something less. I would say about 300. Uh, and, but for these atlas, uh, well, many of them, for instance, this is kind of the, the natural uh, uh, course of things, like uh, some of those 300 doesn't exist anymore. Because mm. maybe they, they started five years ago and then the crisis or they... I don't know, they maybe they join forces with somebody else, they split, or they just maybe they couldn't do that. So they just, now they're working for somebody else. So um, when I, um, so the, the, the Atlas and involved, uh, well, at the beginning, the, the main idea was to involve a very specific selection of 120 practices, which I uh, invited to, uh, take uh, uh, some time to answer this online survey, which was based on around, let's say, 30 questions, something like that, 30, 40 questions. And out of those uh, 120, 95 uh, accepted my invitation and answer, uh, answer uh, the questions. And basically, Atlas then is based on their answers. Is based, of course, it's based on everything that I knew before starting Atlas, which was already kind of five years of research. But then uh, the, also the, um, uh, to, to, as I mentioned, I wanted to reorganize a bit uh, some intuition that I had, uh, something that I discovered through the first few years of research, but uh, it wasn't kind of very clear. So the, um, the need to... Uh, uh, restart in a way from zero the research by doing this. It was also a kind of the idea, of course, to discover something new, to confirm something that I had in mind, but also to maybe to, I don't know, to just uh, find that uh, what, I, what I thought it was kind of very clear, maybe it was not that clear. Um, and then the book and the research uh, developed into these four main chapters, which right. are, of course, uh, these uh, the, the, the four main top, uh, themes uh, in, in the online survey and, uh, and, the, and the conclusion. I don't know if I answered your question. Maybe uh, this is uh, kind of part of it. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so, so what, I'm, what I'm kind of hearing from you is that the... It's it's a it was a very observational process, yeah. like a very a very reflective process in the way that you've kind of 
in been engaging with these this generation of new practices and you've been distilling up like these themes directly from sort of analytical processes from your initial research yeah which is which is really interesting and it's very kind of uh i get the sense as well that there's there's less conclusions and more reflection which is again it, it's kind of contrary to that um the old way of practicing, let's call it, of the, of the Starchitect, and that this is a much more sort of fluid, dynamic generation of architectural practices that's beginning to emerge. And did you, why did you focus on only emerging practices and what did, how do you define what an emerging practice is? Yeah, um, well, I've been focusing on emerging practices because the, the main, uh, let's say, the, since the beginning, the new generations wanted to understand uh, how those uh, that are kind of, they were finishing their study, they are finishing their studies, or those that are moving their first steps in the job market um, are the most, uh, that which have been uh, affected in a way, affected by the financial crisis and those that had in a way to really rethink themselves. Uh, the idea that uh, those that were starting, let's say between 2000, 2010, uh, they have been trained to be architects in the most traditional sense of the term. But then when they kind of finished their studies, they found out that the world was totally different. This happens many times. I mean, uh, because of course at the university, uh, many times happens that uh, there's a lot of theory and uh, but then to um, apply this theory to the real world, it's always kind of different. And I think there's always this gap independently by the crisis or not, but specifically mm. think um, during those years, uh, and even today, I would say, uh, universities in architectural university are still um, very reluctant to um, teach you or to uh, at least think other ways to uh, practice this profession, which has been changing. And 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 um, and I think that. I wanted in a way also to, uh, at the beginning when I started the, the new generation, I, w I was going in that direction. So I was focusing on new generation. As I mentioned, also was very personal because uh, I was one of those which after university were kind of a bit lost in a way. I've been working a couple of years in the Netherlands for uh, two different architectural offices, which uh, was a very interesting experience to me because uh, they were uh, uh, a lot, uh, very well uh, um, interested, let's say, in, in, in the research aspects of the architectural project. So I kind of learned that how to do research, for instance, also applying the research to the, the real world, let's say. Um, so that it was something personal, of course. I wanted to understand how to do that because I wanted also to, uh, to do that. I wanted to... Uh, to find out how to, uh, to 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 do that in the real world, let's say. But I also think that uh, at the end, when you um, um, when you I don't know going on the internet and you um, are looking for projects, etc., and you uh, at the end uh, or and the the majority of us at the end end up to uh, um, the most. Uh, uh, famous or the most uh, established, uh, uh, let's say, media platform related with 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 architecture, such as Design or Design Boom or Art Daily, all of those platforms that as architect we probably know. At the end, I I I I, I found a kind of a, there, there were kind of lack of information related with uh, with with the youngest generation. Of course, there are some that are interested right. in these fields. So I wanted also to create a bit this space. I wanted to, I think that um, many times when we think about young architects, we think that ah, they don't have experience or they, they're also their projects are lacking of experience. They're not that interesting, etc. But uh, the last chapter of Atlas, which is projects, uh, kind of wants to actually demonstrate that 
uh, young architects are building a lot and are building a very high quality stuff, which many times they don't find any place in uh, in, in, in the big, let's say, uh, or, or they don't find the, the right place in, in, uh, on the internet, in these platforms or in magazines, architecture magazine. Of course, I understand because it, it's easier it's easier for architecture magazine to just publish uh, um, very uh, well recognized project because they are they are there and we know them. We know that OMA is building every year very interesting building. We know that uh, Foster every year is building very interesting building. We know that and you know that it's kind of easy to to find out that that building is there and then but it's very difficult to um, to find these information which are mm. in Atlas because you you don't find them almost anywhere at the end. So you have to research, you have to, and how do we do that? Uh, at the beginning, which it, it was much more difficult, of course, but after five, six years, uh, the one of the main goals of new generation was to build a network. Yeah. Uh, you, you find out that uh, you're not alone. There's many like you uh, everywhere in, uh, in, in many countries. There are so many interesting young architects which they don't find, uh, we do not have exposure, they don't have, it's, it's very difficult to find them. But then uh, starting from 5, 10, then uh, 20, 50, and now 300, um, it's, uh, you, you see that uh, there's a lot of super cool and interesting things happening. So, so, uh, so, so at what point did you decide personally that you were not going I mean do you do you still practice as like a sort of traditional mode of architecture uh, or, so, so, well was or was there a point where you were you realized how much information or how much like interesting or important research there was to be done that you kind of decided that you were going to set up as an iterant office and solely focus on on this kind of Research. So when I, when I when I when I uh, started, uh, itinerant office uh, was uh, um, I, I've also tried many ways to I, many, many things. I participated in competition. I've been doing some other research. Research. Um, I've been uh, try to collaborate with as a freelance. Let's say to get few money to uh, start and continue, etc. So at the beginning, of course, I, I did, I think, the same that everybody uh, does. Like, uh, let's start, let's, let's, let's start from what you have, some content, some personal content, etc. But of course, I was, uh, since the beginning, very interested to kind of, uh, uh, I think that it was more an intuition that it's part of the conclusion of Atlas, which is, uh, uh, I would say that it's very important that at the beginning of your career, you take your time to design your practice, to design yourself, to, to instead of just uh, do a lot of things. And I think that part of, part of, of course, you have to also to do things. You have to earn some money to do that. So at the beginning, I was more into the architectural and competition, etc. But I also, I, I, since the beginning, I thought that uh, it was very important to, to, to take some time to, to think, to study, and to... Uh, uh, in a way, uh, do some research about what would what you want you want to be when you are old, when you grow up. In a way, when when you what would you like to be? Um, and then by doing this research, I thought it was kind of uh, easier to me to understand. Okay, now that I uh, I know uh, a lot of different ways to practice this profession, so I know that you can. Uh, could be more interesting in the editorial field or more interested in doing competition or in building buildings or in participatory process or uh, or working with other disciplines which doesn't have nothing to do with uh, architectural field etc etc when you have all of them there to kind of more easier to understand yeah I think that I'm kind of more uh, interested in this and then mm -hmm. you, you you try to develop that part uh, but said so uh, I would say that um, um, through itinerant office, I um, well, I would say that new generations help me out to understand that uh, the things that we are doing uh, through itinerant office are the thing that we really like to do. So itinerant office uh, is uh, 
um, a, 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 I would define a kind of a contemporary practice relates with architecture, which uh, uh, through uh, research uh, develop different kind of projects, which of course they, they are characterized by the strong uh, part of the research, which has always happened at the beginning, and develop into different formats. Uh, sometimes in books, publications, and then the, the editorial part is kind of strong in the activity that we developed. Uh, sometimes in uh, public events, such as the festival, but also the smaller workshops. Now, for instance, we are developing a series of workshops for new graduates or young architects to kind of uh, help them to understand um, how to think about this first part of their mm -hmm. career, how to which are the concepts to think about and try to design their practice, the, the idea that they have in mind about their practice. So we're developing workshop in this sense. But um, also a few uh, weeks ago, we um, closed uh, a project uh, with the, um, uh, related with the, the, the participatory um, concepts. Uh, we won um, a, a public tender in, uh, in, in Italy from the Ministry of Culture. And then uh, uh, it was perfect because in a way it represents a bit uh, these, uh, uh, let's say, um, complexity of, uh, uh, of IT in front office because uh, it was not a, a, a tender or a, a code for architects in a way. It was open to other disciplines, uh, but it was related with the topic of the urban regeneration. So in that case, we. Uh, present an idea to develop a research around uh, peripheral working neighborhoods uh, uh, in, in a small city in the north of Italy because we were interested in that specific um, um, that, that, that specific typology of building and then we uh, proposed in the second phase after research to develop a participatory pro process with uh, the inhabitants of the neighborhood and try to um, involve them in a process to understand because they, this this uh, building had a courtyard which was kind of abandoned, a bit neglected, etc. So we proposed them what what to do something there with a small budget. So they were the participatory part, and then also the architectural part because at the end we we ended up uh, designing this small installation which uh, has been uh, uh, building through. Um, 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 out the construction workshop, so so it, it's a kind of in a way wow. represents a very diverse format. I think that uh, here it's just to I would say that uh, the the word format when if I have to choose a, a word that define a bit uh, what we do the, the word format the term format in in itinerant office is very important because of course there's the research but then the format. Uh, that uh, in, uh, the, this research developed into different kind of formats. Sometimes, as I mentioned, is workshops, sometimes is events, sometimes is exhibitions, sometimes is book, sometimes is video. We, uh, besides the video interviews, we work a lot with uh, with a filmmaker. For instance, for that project in uh, in Piacenza, which is this small city in the north of Italy, at the end, we have been working with uh, an Italian filmmaker. Uh, developed a short of uh, three, four minutes, uh, which in a way try to create a different narration around uh, this entire process. And, uh, and, and um, so this is kind of, uh, um, the, this project in a way um, represents that we enjoy very much to uh, work with different formats always try to find the best format that fits with a particular particular idea um, just so, to... so, 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 so this this book is, is just one of many projects that's happening in in I, in I, interim I, office and, yeah. and, 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 and so this is amazing so how, how many people are there in your in the office uh, now we are uh, now we are four people uh, besides right. there are three uh, but uh, uh, I think this I Sometimes I ask myself when I do interviews, I, I ask to uh, the emerging practices that I need. Uh, uh, what what is their idea of uh, of of the of an office? How would you like to grow uh, in in the next few years, for instance? And uh, and sometimes it's like 
um, many people answer that no, they really like to work by themselves and maybe just having, I don't know, one intern or one collaborator or something very, very small. And some others, they have a very kind of entrepreneurial way to you know, I want to grow in five years. Now we are five, in five years I want to be 15, etc., etc. And then it's a question that I cannot answer myself when I think about itinerant office because on the one hand, I think that the scale of itinerant office is a uh, is kind of interesting. Uh, so it's, uh, you really have the chance to uh, work on these projects and control every detail and quality. But on the other hand, uh, what I enjoy very much uh, is to um, work with external collaboration, collaborations, uh, which are many times freelance, very into a specific uh, field. So they are experts and uh, uh, they might be able to improve a lot the quality of the project. So for instance, even if the core team of IT and office is three, four people, for instance, for the project in Piacenza, I think that uh, I've been working with other 10 people, for instance, I mean, the video maker for the, the short documentary that we have been doing uh, for the developing of the workshop uh, that we have been, uh, um, um, well, sorry, for the, for the realization of the installation that we have been building in, uh, um, in the courtyard or, the, or this neighborhood. Then I um, worked with other two people, or also one was, uh, was um, one is an architect uh, that I met a few years ago, and, uh, and I hired him as a freelance. And another one, which is a designer, which has is, is expert in building stuff uh, mm. with his own end, let's say. So I have a lot of experience in, in building things, which I, for instance, I'm not very good with. So, uh, so I mean, uh, so every project, let's say, let's say, beside the core team, has a lot of uh, a lot of external collaboration, which I find um, very exciting on the one yeah. hand but also very uh, stressful in a way because <laughs> every time you have to set up a new team uh, because you want to specifically develop uh, an aspect of the project which you wouldn't be able to develop within your own team. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for listening. And don't forget to book your 15-minute chat with me by using the link in the information. I look forward to speaking with you. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.